Hong Kong was formed by a supervolcano. No, this isn't clickbait, and yes, you read the title and heard me correctly. The landscape that makes up the Hong Kong that we know today was formed by an extremely large supervolcanic eruption that occurred here around 140 million years ago. And this video is all about that eruption. If you've ever visited Hong Kong, you might have seen these interesting hexagonal rock formations located all over the place. You'll find them at islets and around much of Hong Kong and within Victoria Harbour. These rock formations are known as columnar jointing and they're a somewhat rare occurrence in general, but they are especially rare when the rock is rhyolite. If you've ever watched any of my other videos, you'll know by now that rhyolite is an extrusive felsic rock that is associated with extremely large and explosive volcanic eruptions. These rhyolitic columnar joints appear like this because when they are laid down in their molten or semi-molten state during an eruption, they begin to cool and the temperature differential shrinks and subsequently pulls the rocks inwards, cracking them and leaving these columnar formations behind. The reason they are so rare with rhyolite is because this type of magma is so thick that it doesn't flow like basalt does, which is the usual rock type that we find these formations occurring within, usually when lava has solidified in multiple layers and then when eroded through time, the formations that are revealed can be quite spectacular in their appearance. Don't get me wrong though, in between supervolcanic eruptions, this supervolcano would very often release effusive basaltic lava through the many lava dikes that it would create over time, and some of this hexagonal columnar jointing can be found in some of the local basalt too. But the main reason I mention all of this is because the reason we find these columnar joints here is because this rhyolitic magma didn't really need to flow. Why? Because Hong Kong is literally built on top of the bowels of an ancient supervolcanic eruption. And when this massive eruption occurred, the caldera collapse was unbelievably immense. This eruption released at least 1300 cubic kilometers worth of material and would have created immense climactic changes to the globe when the ensuing volcanic winters took place for years or possibly even decades after it. So these columnar joints are basically the magma that was left over inside the caldera after it had collapsed inwards, and as this magma began to cool, this cracking occurred. Along with these extrusive rhyolitic rocks are a massive conglomerate of differing intrusive felsic rocks that became frozen in time when this supervolcanic system finally died. This caldera is known as the High Island Volcanic Caldera, and this is how it's thought to have looked in size when it originally erupted. Nowadays, as you can see, most of it is underwater, but the original caldera was thought to be 18 kilometers in diameter. But over the years, most of the volcanic rock has weathered and eroded, with the only remaining evidence of it left submerged. This supervolcano was active for roughly 40 million years, from 180 to around 140 million years ago, and it released four other caldera forming eruptions during its lifetime that we know of. If this video gets enough likes, I'll make another video on the other four massive eruptions that occurred here, so smash that like button. The deepest part of the supervolcano is in the middle of the city in Kowloon and Hong Kong Island, where leftover pockets of magma are marked out in the form of granite. This area has eroded the rhyolite that once existed here, revealing the deep intrusive rocks that underlied the magma chamber, which slowly cooled down here to become frozen and solidified in time when the magmatic system finally died. The fueling of this supervolcano was from an ancient subduction zone that had occurred here. At that point in time, the ancient Pacific Ocean had collided with and was subducting beneath this area, and it fueled the massive wave of magnetism that created and shaped Hong Kong and the surrounding area. It added a vast quantity of material to the surrounding land from the many volcanic eruptions that occurred around here. While it may be worrying to live in such close proximity to a volcano of this scale, luckily for us it's now extinct. In present day, this caldera has literally been tilted on an angle, with one side of it being higher than the other as a result of the tectonic forces that were once at play here. The northeastern part of the caldera is tilted substantially higher than the southwestern end. And this eruption was among the most largest that we've discovered, with it surpassing the most recent Yellowstone supervolcanic eruption in size and scale. 
When this occurred, it would have been a truly catastrophic event to all of the dinosaurs and plants that were alive at that time in Earth's history. But regardless of it, life would continue to flourish like always, and that would remain the case until a certain meteorite decided to show the dinosaurs what a real extinction event looks like, and, well, we all know what happened after that. So if you ever visit Hong Kong, make sure to check out the volcanic history that it's built within. After all, its origins were formed by a truly monumental and catastrophic event. And that, to me, makes it fascinating beyond all measure. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting or fascinating, then you're probably a little into earth science or science in general. I release new videos once a week, so consider subscribing and if you'd like to help the channel out, the best way that you can contribute and make a huge difference is by sharing our videos around first and foremost, followed by liking the video to let YouTube know we're doing something right. Thanks again for supporting the channel, it really does mean the world to me, and like always, I'll see you all real soon.